In this tutorial, we're going to create a seamless repeat pattern in Procreate. To get started, I'm going to create a new canvas by clicking the plus sign. And then we're going to click this plus sign again at the top. And I'm going to create a canvas that's 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. I like to use this size. You can really use any size you'd like as long as it's square. But I would make sure that you're keeping a, a large, the largest size that you would possibly need because you don't want to have to scale up in Procreate because it's a pixel raster based program. And make sure you're always setting your DPI to 300. And then click Create. So we have our new canvas. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our canvas for creating a repeat pattern. Start off with, I'm just going to drag and drop color onto the screen. And then I'm going to select the square we just created. So I'm going to just resize this. I'm going to click the top left node and I'm going to enter 2000 by 2000, which is half the size, both vertically and horizontally, of our canvas that we just created. I find it much easier to use this method of tapping the node and it'll snap to the direction of the node you tap rather than trying to drag and uh, resize it manually. This ensures that it's exactly where we want it to be on the screen. And then you can just release this selection by tapping up here on the little S. And then what we're going to do is select this square that we just created. So we can do this a couple different ways. We're going to go to our layers panel and we can tap the layer and then click select. Or you can also just hold the layer with two fingers and that will select it. We're going to then tap save and load and create a selection. Press the plus button here to create your first selection. And then we're going to tap again to release. So just repeating that process, we're going to drag and drop again. And this time we're going to go to the top right hand corner, tap that node, enter in 2000 by 2000 pixels, and it'll snap to the top right hand corner. Tap to release, and then we're going to select that again. Just making sure that layer is selected, we're going to go to save and load again, tap the plus button for selection two. Release, and then we're just going to repeat that again. Drop, select, bottom left hand corner, 2000 by 2000, release that selection, and then I like to make sure that we're definitely on that layer by selecting it each time. Save and load plus selection three. And then for our last section, we're going to go 2000 by 2000. We're going to release that, select our layer, save selection four, and release that. So now that we've created our selections, we're done with this. So we can actually just clear this layer. And now I'm going to set it up for creating the pattern. So I want to rename this layer background. And then I want to create another layer and call this elements. And then we're just going to, with this layer selected, we're just going to tap and move your pencil slightly to the right, and that'll select both layers. And we're going to group these. And I'm going to rename this group pattern. So now we're all set for creating our seamless pattern. I'm going to start with the background, and I'm just going to go to white. I want the background to be white because we're ultimately going to create a pattern brush. And pattern brushes work best if you create them in black and white. So I'm going to start with a white background. I'm just going to drag this, drop it into the background. Can't really see it, but you can see here on a layer that it's been filled with white. Also, as a quick tip, if you want to make sure that you're on true white, you can go to your color disk. Let's say we're over here. Double tap here for white, and that'll give you true white. Double tap at the bottom, and that'll give you true black. So again, we're just going to go with white for our background. And then for our elements, I want to use black. I'm going to go back to my palettes, select black, or again, you can go to your disk, double click at the bottom for black. And I'm going to create just a fun abstract pattern. 
So I'm going to grab a brush to use for our pattern, and I think I'm gonna pick something from Lisa Glan's Effortless Gouache collection. I like this one, this one looks fun. So we're gonna select this brush, make sure we have our black color selected, and I'm just gonna start kind of creating some of these just abstract circles. I want it to look rough and hand-drawn. I'm just gonna randomly put those around the screen, making sure they're spaced out on the canvas. And if you make a mistake, like I just didn't like that mark I made, you can just double tap to undo, tap with three fingers to redo. So I'm just gonna use some different sizes. Wanna make sure that it's, you know, evenly spaced on the screen. Keeping in mind that your repeat pattern is going to be created by flipping out the quadrants that we just created. So the inner corners of your quadrants are actually gonna become the outer quadrants. And it'll make more sense when we do it in a minute. But just keep in mind as you're creating your elements here that you wanna make sure that your elements are um, evenly spaced and where you'd like them, especially along the vertical and horizontal center of your canvas. Because those are the pieces that are gonna become your first repeat and then later we can go back and fill in some additional elements. It'll make more sense when we do it in a minute, but just keeping in mind, I like to make sure that I'm filling in, especially around the center, vertical and horizontal areas of the canvas. And keeping in mind that you don't wanna have any necessarily hard lines in your pattern. I want this to be scattered and random. And so this is sort of creating this line here. I think it's gonna look a little strange in the pattern. So I'm gonna undo that and just move that up a little bit. I'm just gonna continue kind of creating some random dots here. We just want this to look really textural and there's a lot of different things I think we're going to be able to do with this pattern brush in our artwork. And I like to make sure that my pattern is full and doesn't have too many white spaces without going overboard and it just takes some time to really learn what works best for a repeat pattern. You can always go back and make changes later. So this is really just our experimentation phase. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for now. So now we're gonna start the first phase of creating our repeat pattern. So I'm gonna go back to our layers. I'm gonna collapse the pattern to make sure the entire group is selected. And then I'm going to click the selection tool. I'm going to go back to save and load and tap our first selection. And then I'm going to tap the selection tool at the top, flip horizontal and flip vertically. And then to release that selection, we can just tap again. We're going to tap here, click save and load, select section two, the selection tool, flip horizontal, flip vertically, and then release that. Go back and do that for the third and fourth sections. Okay, now you can't really tell because this is an abstract pattern, but we've essentially turned our pattern upside down by flipping each quadrant out. So I'm gonna just turn it right side up. Now this pattern is actually looking fairly even, but you can see that we need maybe some additional elements along the center here, maybe vertically here. Um, you can make any changes at this point as long as you're not going over the edges because we've already started to create our repeat pattern here. So you can see that this element lines up here, this element lines up here. So you can see that we're already starting to make that repeat pattern. So you don't wanna go over any of your edges. But within the pattern, we can make any changes now. So I'm just gonna expand this. We wanna make sure we're on our elements layer. And I'm just gonna start adding a few additional elements, especially around the center area. I think we need something here. 
can, you can add anywhere that you want as long as you're not crossing over the edges of your canvas. And just make sure that we're filling in maybe any white spaces that we have, make any of those changes. We can always go back and make additional changes once we see what our pattern looks like. But I think this is just gonna create a nice textural brush that we can use in our artwork. So I think that looks pretty good for now. So at this point, we want to test out our repeat pattern. So I'm gonna collapse this layer, duplicate it, and then we're gonna flatten that down. And then we wanna duplicate it three more times. Now with this layer selected, I'm gonna use the selection tool, tap the left hand node, and resize that to 2000 by 2000. I'm gonna release that selection, and we're gonna do that for our next layer. And this is essentially just testing out your pattern. I'm gonna change that to 2000 by 2000. In other words, you're zooming out basically from your repeat tile to see what this looks like as a repeat pattern. Okay, now uh, for the purposes of our tutorial, I think this looks pretty good as a repeat. If we wanted to, we could always go back to our original pattern and make changes to the element. So I'm gonna collapse these down and then unselect it so we can go back to our tile. Now, if we needed to make any changes at this point, we could just go to the elements. You could grab your selection tool. So if we wanted to move this one around a little, we could kind of nudge it over we could make additional changes to it at this point. And I wanna make sure I have my brush selected, it was on a race. We could make additional changes at this point if we wanted to add anything. Um, but at this point, I think it looks pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna go back to our repeat pattern, make sure this is collapsed. And then I'm gonna just copy this canvas because this is where we're gonna create our seamless pattern brush. So going over to your uh, your wrench tool, I'm going to click add and then copy canvas. So I'm going to go up to my brushes panel. I'm just going to create a new brush library and call it tutorial. And then I'm going to add the new brush here by clicking the plus sign to the top right. And so now we're in our um, brush studio and there's a lot of different things you can do with brushes. I'm not going to cover nearly half of it today. I'm only going to cover just a little bit to give you an idea of some of the things you can do and just the basics of creating a pattern brush. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my shape source, click edit, and then click import. From here you can click source library. Procreate comes built in with a wide variety of uh, shape sources. And this is going to change how your brush paints. So it's going to change, uh, for example, the edge that you see when you paint on the palette. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can experiment with. I'm going to keep it pretty simple for the purposes of our tutorial today. And I'm just going to go with a medium hard brush here. And then we're going to click done. Next thing I'm going to do is go to grain. I'm going to click edit for grain source. And this is where we're going to import our canvas. So click import and then paste. Now within Procreate, the way the Brush Studio works, everything that you see here in black is actually going to show up as white and white's going to show up as black. So it's the inverse of what you see is how your brush is going to work. And so I want this to actually have black circles and a white background. So to do that, I actually need to invert this and you can do that very easily by tapping with two fingers and then click done. So then I want to uh, take a look at my brush. We can see here in our drawing pad that we can test this out now. You can see we're getting a nice textural brush that we could use, um, I think in a lot of different ways in our artwork to create texture and interest. We can make some changes here. We could scale up our pattern. You can see that makes it a lot larger. 
we can scale it way down. I'm gonna keep it, I think, around maybe 25%. Looks pretty good. You also want to turn down the opacity on your Apple Pencil selection down to zero, to none. And the reason is when you use your pattern brush, you wanna make sure that the consistency is the same and your opacity is not changing with the pressure of your brush. Again, there's a lot of other things that you can do to change how your brush works, but this is really the basics. I'm gonna finish up by going to About Brush and just change the title of our brush, and we're gonna call this, um, let's call this Gouache Texture. You can add a photo here. You can add your name. I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm gonna just sign my name, my signature here. And then one thing that's a little bit quirky about Procreate is that if I went here and I click done now, for some reason it won't save the title and the information that we changed here. So always make sure you click off of about brush and then click done. I'm not sure why it does that. It's a little quirky. So click done and now we have our brush created. So let's go back to our layers and test this out. So I'm gonna add a new layer. And as a quick tip, one thing that you can do to quickly select a layer and just that layer is tap and hold, and it'll select just that and unselect everything else. So now let's test out that brush we just created. I'm gonna pick a color here from our palettes. I'm gonna go with this peach color. And you can see we have our seamless brush. And we have this beautiful texture created that we can use in a variety of ways. We can always go back and make changes to that brush. Let's say if we want to increase the grains, the scale size. We just go back and do that, and that'll change the grain. Keep in mind here that if you scale up here, this is only gonna change the width of your brush. You can see if we go down, it's changing the width, but it's not actually changing the scale of the pattern. You have to do that within the brush studio. So you can see we've created a nice pattern here, seamless pattern that we could use in all kinds of different artwork we can use different colors and I think it looks pretty good. So that's it. Um, that's the end of our tutorial. I would love to see what you create and let me know if you have any questions.